Hell ho ho ho, and welcome to Become the Teapot. I'm Ian. And Snow am I. Hold on to your baubles and prepare to get festive as we discuss the merriest Marvel movie of all, Iron Man 3. It is time for our very first Christmas Ian's Egg Hunt. <laughs> I don't know if it is a Christmas Ian's Egg Hunt. Ian's Ian's Egg Hunt. Ian's Ian's Egg Hunt. Ian's Ian's Egg Hunt. I'm not yoking you. So first of all, the Mandarin, or the fake one, mm-hmm. my name's Trevor, has a tattoo on the back of his neck, which is actually Captain America's shield, but rather than the star, he's got an A, which I'm assuming stands for anarchy. Yeah, I think it was actually the anarchist symbol, mm. which is that sort of stylized A. Yeah, so that's a nice little tie-in. Mm-hmm. Also, when Pepper is in bed with Tony and he has his panic attack dream, mm-hmm. the T-shirt that she is wearing is actually the same T-shirt that Peter Parker wears at the end of Homecoming. Oh, when okay. Yeah, when Tony's walking with him and they're about to do the big reveal, mm-hmm. he's wearing the T-shirt that Pepper wears in bed. So does that imply that uh, Peter and Tony slept together? <laughs> Um, my take on that is maybe that's just a t-shirt that he gave to Peter. I don't know. What's on the t-shirt? Um, it's like a, it's a blue t-shirt with like scientific symbols. Maybe it's just the sort of showing that Tony and Peter are very similar people. They would own the same clothes. Yeah, I mean, I assume it's Tony's t-shirt that Pepper's wearing. Yeah, no, no, I get that. But why is then Peter wearing it? I don't know. <laughs> Moving on to my next point. When Iron Man 3 came out, that would have been after Disney had acquired the rights. So there are a couple of references to the number 23, which I'm assuming is a reference to D23, Disney's Comic-Con. Yeah. 23 can be seen on the reg plate of Tony's Audi. Mm-hmm. When he pulls up to the house, it says start 23. And also later on, after the house has been destroyed, it's on the top and the back of a police car. And the last of my Easter eggs is that on the side of Killian's boat, right at the end of the film, it says Broxon, which is an energy company. Mm -hmm. It was previously known as Broxon Oil Company. Yeah, that's sort of Marvel's equivalent of Exxon, which obviously is Mm. a real world oil company. And then sort of Roxxon have grown to be sort of multinational corporation with shady underpinnings within Marvel. Yeah, so it also makes an appearance in several other Marvel properties. Yeah. Mainly the TV shows. So there's in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Carter, Daredevil, Cloak and Dagger, and Iron Fist. However, I think that last one's a mistake because I don't remember a live action Iron Fist. Uh, yeah, no, that, I think you need to up your research game there. Something's not quite right with websites you're <laughs> using. But yeah, also it's mentioned again in this film, isn't it? It's uh, the, the chap that the fake Mandarin kills is a, a Roxxon board member. So mm-hmm. yes, so there were ties to this film as well. Yeah, so moving on to my Christmas eggs. Not sure if you noticed, but on the fireplace, Jarvis has his own um, Christmas stocking. All right, okay, that's cute. Which is quite nice. And my final one is that Iron Man 3 Mm -hmm. is the most successful film that's based at Christmas. It's actually number 20 on the highest grossing movie list. Mm -hmm. This film made just over 1.2 billion, which... It's ridiculous. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Uh, but no, thank you for your, your Easter eggs. They were delicious. Mm-mm-mm, tasty chocolate. And your Christmas eggs, um, I don't know, some sort of stuffing. I, I'm a bit confused by <laughs> these, but thank you regardless. So you said there, and I noticed you chose your words very carefully, that it is the highest grossing film set at Christmas. Mm-hmm. So this being our Christmas episode, would you consider this a Christmas film? If I'm honest, not really. You've got Christmas elephant. You've got Christmas elements. Christmas elephants. <laughs> Christmas elephants. I'd like to have an elephant for Christmas. But how are you going to fit him in your sleigh? I don't believe he'd be a lot of trouble if you feed him lots of peanuts on the way. You've got Christmas elements sprinkled throughout. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, if you take them out, not really. I mean, it wouldn't change the film. Yeah, see, this is an argument I had with people about Die Hard last Christmas. It's the reason I'm no longer invited to theirs for Christmas. <laughs> um, they said the same thing there, is if you removed the, the setting of Christmas from Die Hard, it would you know, not affect the film. Mm. Which I disagree with, because I think you could take that to a logical extreme to say, if you removed the setting of Christmas from Home Alone, and it was just about two people breaking into a, someone's house to rob them and him brutally beating them up as he does so, it wouldn't be a Christmas film anymore. But it is. I still would consider Home Alone absolutely a Christmas film. Yeah, I mean, with Home Alone, I feel that the Christmas part does play a strong part within the film. 
But what part does it play? So if you set that during the summer and the family was going on their summer holidays mm -hmm. and, you know, the kid got left behind and there's some robbers broken, it would be the same story. My point being that if you removed the Christmas element from that film, the central prospect of the film still works, mm. as does Die Hard, as does this. So what is the differentiation between Home Alone being a Christmas movie and Iron Man 3 and Die Hard being a Christmas movie? Well, I'm one of those people that I do call Die Hard a Christmas film. Oh, absolutely. But when it comes down to it, again, it's not really, it's set at a Christmas party. But with this, it might be because it's a whole part of MCU. If this was just solely one film about Christmas and Iron Man, then yeah, I probably would call it a Christmas film. But because it's a sequel and it's part of the MCU as a whole, I don't count it as a Christmas film. But there are so many references to Christmas in it. I mean, from the off, well, actually, it starts at New Year's 1999. But after that, you know, there's Christmas music. Several Christmas songs are played. There is Christmas trees, Christmas decorations, Christmas lights, stockings, pretty much in every single scene. I think Tony Stark's closing lines to Pepper on the barge are about Christmas. You know, there's so many references to it. And that's the case with a lot of Shane Black's films. I mean, if this film came out 20, 30 odd years back, then it might have had time to become a classic. I think that's the thing with these older Christmas films that aren't quite Christmas films, mm -hmm. but we do still class them as, is that they've been out for so many years that they've become classics and therefore they are counted as Christmas films. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to throw in Lethal Weapon as a Christmas film. <laughs> it's definitely a Christmas film. It's all about that emerging partnership between the two characters. Riggs ends up spending Christmas at uh, Murtar's house. But again, it's one of these films that doesn't make the is it a christmas film list uh which ironically i think is also written by shane black so he's just obsessed <laughs> with christmas that man so i i like to think that shane black christmas has its own separate genre uh, but every single one of them is absolutely a christmas movie okay <laughs> oh 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 merry christmas and a happy new year nice <laughs>